Hello and welcome to the board. Um, this is our 46th episode after our abortive attempt to do a 45th episode <laughs> last week. Uh, we had some internet issues, uh, but we're back and we're live. Uh, and today we're going to be talking about agile tools, agile tools and platforms. Yeah. Um, so I think the first bunch of things we were going to talk about, um, we briefly discussed it this morning, was uh, tools or platforms that help us with planning our sprints and tracking our sprints and, and tracking releases. Yeah, yeah, I think it's, it's always a really common question that we get asked is sort of what do you guys use and I suppose people are really always really keen to get a new tool in yeah. Um, yeah. most of the time. Yeah. Um, and you know, there's a range that we've used and a range we've come, come into contact with and it seems that the ones that I've personally come into contact with are useful for different types of projects. Yeah, yeah. So, um, I mean, around here, um, the most commonly used platform for us is Rally Dev, or Rally, yeah. depending on what you want to call it, um, which really gives us a lot of power in terms of tracking and reporting and release planning you might have a bit more to say about that than yeah me. yeah <laughs> I mean I think a bit all, but. I think really rally is starting sort of at the um, sort of organizational level right yeah. down to the team level so you can mm. track your streams of work and everything that's going on within the organization in an agile way um, and break that all the way down into right down to a user story that a team delivers and even there's bug tracking and stuff like that so it's mm. it's a really really powerful tool and there's heaps of reporting um, and you can sort of customize dashboards for each role that you mm. might have in your team so managers can see a different view than what team members can see um, and uh, i mean we find it really great mm. um, but it is yeah it's it's an industrial Industrial strength. Strength, scrum yeah. tool. It, I mean, it I can really think has. of a number of um, organisations, you know, Wellington that would benefit, for example, um, government departments that are moving to, yeah. to Agile. You know, they're the people that are really looking at that kind of scale. Um, but also some um, some of the larger SMEs that we've come yeah. in contact with. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's it's basically if, you, if you're taking that step beyond having sort of one or two teams delivering mm. and you're looking to move into an agile planning um, and trying to track your work from sort of the very start all the way through and streams of work mm. I think that's a really sort of when rally really comes into its own yeah and um, so rally is so fully featured that actually we, we've done quite a bit of learning over the, the last year and we'd like to continue doing learning so to that end we've set up a um, rally user group um, on meetup here in wellington um, so if anyone's using rally or wants to use rally and wants to come along and talk about um, how we can get the best out of it um, yeah. you can we'll put, pop the link up afterwards to that meetup but basically it's in about a month's time it's um, can be held at our office, there may be drinks and, and, <laughs> and snacks, uh, depending on how organised they are. No, there will definitely yeah. be something along those lines. Yeah. Um, and we're hoping that we'll people will come along um, with questions and we'll run it a bit like a lean coffee so that we can get a spread of topics covered in, in the hour that we're meeting. Yeah, and I think as well, when I was having a look for, for our meetup, a lot there are a lot of rally user groups sort of spread all over the world. Mm. So do check out meetup if, if obviously you're not in Wellington. Um, and you are interested in rally or need some help with rally, there are plenty of groups out there that you can get in touch with. Yeah, I mean, Meetup's great for that. It's kind of a, a group for anything you can think of, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, yeah. so that's it, rally. Um, one of the ones that we used a wee bit earlier on um, is Pivotal Tracker, which I think is um, it's, it's quite simple in terms of if you're sort of new to the whole thing, you've got like one team perhaps. Um, yeah. It's got some nice drag and drop functionality. Um, it, it sets out quite nicely, I think, the, the backlog, the sprint backlog and the, the ice box. Yeah. Um, yeah for me, really it's nice. all done in a column view and a drag and drop to, to plan your sprints and move things between the ice box and, and the backlog. Yeah, so I, I mean, it. yeah, I'd agree with that. And it's, it's really a great tool if you want to, if you kind of need something and you're going to be starting tomorrow. Mm. Um, it's really quick to get up and running, um, really easy for teams and, and product owners to, to get the hang of. Yeah. Um, it, it's quite um, yeah, intuitive because of its simplicity, isn't it? Yeah. There's not much training involved in it. But. No, no. And, it, and I mean, and then again, you get 
to the flip side, once you start wanting to track a little bit more, it mm. does get a bit more challenging. Yeah, you which know, is where your practice has matured, you've got maybe expanded yeah. a bit, you can look at something with more features and more along the lines of um, portfolio planning. Yeah, yeah, and I think, like rally. I, I mean, our, I, I suppose our organisation mirrors that. We started with Pivotal Tracker mm. and we were very happy with it for, for a long time and then mm. we reached a point where there were sort of reporting requirements that we needed and the next level of tracking that we really wanted and it didn't quite fit, so we mm. moved on. Mm. Um, so there's a, a couple of other ones um, that have sort of come up in the last three years that I've been working with Agile and uh, one of them is Trello, which is a, a free um, tracking board. For me, Trello is very, very simple, um, and I feel like it's best suited to personal Kanban <laughs> rather yeah. than to a project. I just don't think it gives a project enough. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, I think, again, Trello has its place. I think Kanban, it's a great, mm. it really fits really well because you can, you have the flexibility of mapping out as many columns as you want, mm -hmm. you know? And I think a yeah. lot of people, um, one space I've seen it used a lot is sort of in startups um, mm. and web businesses sharing their backlog and being transparent about their backlog with customers. Mm. Um, and so managing their features in a Trello board and allowing that sort of interaction with people is something that seems really great. Mm. Um, but yeah, then again, you know, it's, it's not even, they're, they're just little things like you can't put sizes on stories mm, and mm. those kind of things. I, 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 to be fair to Trello, I think there are plugins and add-ons that you can get. Right. Um, that where people are working on those features, but it's not out of the box. And yeah, I think the other thing about Trello for me um, is that I've seen people using it um, in isolation, so they're not using visible workspaces because they feel like Trello's enough. Uh, which I think is probably missing an opportunity. Um, you know, it really, if you're using software, um, I mean, it, it's set out nicely like a visible workspace, um, but obviously it's not the physical one. So people need to go and seek it out to see what's happening. Um, and there's really no, for me, no replacement um, for walking past a board yeah. and being able to see where things are at. Absolutely. A snapshot view. Um, so, you know, my advice to people would be, yeah, great, use something online, particularly for your remotely located um, collaborators, but please still use the visible workspaces. Yeah. Or at least, at least try it, you know, if you're not yeah. finding it useful, then, yeah, That's, give it up. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we've got, we've got a classic example where <clears throat> um, our product owner is remote to the mm -hmm. team. Mm -hmm. um, so he doesn't see our, our board, but... <clears throat> We had a discussion with the team and they were still really, really keen to keep that visible workspace. Mm -hmm. They still use the visible workspace far more than they do the online tool. Just yeah. because it's, yeah, it's great to have that sort of information radiator and see what's happening in a sprint and mm. very quickly at a glance, it's right near the team so they don't have to open a new browser window to see anything. They just glance up and it's right there for them. So. I mean, that, that's a really important thing, whether you're using Trello or any other tool to yeah. track your sprints is we really encourage you to get it up on a wall somewhere. Mm. So what about um, Jira? <coughs> you know, a lot of people um, have naturally sort of evolved from using Jira for bug tracking, which was what it was originally um, developed for, um, to now using their um, agile tools. I've never yeah. seen it personally, but yeah, I mean, I've, I wouldn't say um, I have a great deal of experience. I've had a look at it. Um, we've worked with some clients that use it and, mm -hmm. and are quite happy with it. I think it probably fits into possibly somewhere in between Pivotal and um, Rally, mm -hmm. where it's got, again, it's, it's great for tracking um, your sprints and your teams. Um, and it does a little bit of reporting. Right but it doesn't sort of take that next step up to managing your portfolios and, and that kind of thing. Um, again, I mean, with, with any of these tools, it's, I'd really encourage people to find something that fits for purpose. Well, absolutely. You know, I think, if, you know, trying a few things rather than <coughs> sort of just fixing on one immediately, but, yeah. you know, finding something that 
experimenting with what's going to work. You know, and if 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 Trello lets you get started and lets you work with Scrum and Agile and it, it works for you to start with, mm. I mean, I'd mm. say say great and and mm. start with that when eventually once once you get a little bit more mature and you start going oh you know it'd be really great if we could have a burn down mm, mm. then you're gonna go okay well maybe Trello's not quite right and mm. graduate through the tools I think don't feel like you have to pick one to start with and one and tool stay with that's, it forever. that's yours forever mm. all of these tools are really you know it's these days very easy to get your data out and mm. get your data yeah. into something else yeah they're too um, flexible yeah, so I mean, mm. lots of people use Jira, lots of people like it. Mm. Um, we haven't, we for whatever reason, haven't had a great deal of touch with it. I've only used it for bug tracking like years ago. So, and yeah. It was, yeah, it was a bug tracker. I mean, I think <laughs> the one thing that people really do like about Jira is it is flexible in terms of adding custom fields. Mm, right. So it does let you, if, if you have a special requirement to add to your user stories, um, it's, it's very easy to customize the fields. You're not stuck with title, Standard description, fields. and story points, and that's what you've got to work with. Yeah, um, I don't know. I think there's a danger in that. Oh, well, I mean. You know, because it's a bit like um, CRMs when, when people first configure a CRM and they have every field on earth in there yeah. and they end up with something really unwieldy. Yeah, absolutely. So I think there is a, is a danger of, of being able to to add fields um, to a user story that it's going to become incredibly complex. Just sort of a not in the spirit of you know what a user story is for. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but anyway, that's just a side <laughs> side note. Um, so moving on, we're going to start talking about um, video conferencing tools that we've personally used. Um, I think this comes up more and more. Um, you know, the world is becoming smaller in terms of the the speed of in con internet connections and our, our ability to speak to people in different time zones relatively effectively yeah. um, compared to say 20 <coughs> years ago. Um, 20 years ago when I moved to the UK, um, the only option available to me was the telephone. What? Yeah, <laughs> landline, you know, and it, it cost an absolute fortune yeah, every month. Yeah. Oh no, the, the, I tell you, there was also handwriting letters, which oh, I, I did I, a lot of, and I used to get mail just about every single day, it was quite exciting. Uh, yeah. But obviously now we've got so many more options, I know it's a different world. Um, <laughs> so personally, we've, we use regularly um, Google Hangout, Skype and I also use Zoom. Yeah. So I think there's advantages in, in all of those tools and I'd, I'd like to talk a wee bit about them. Um, you use Google Hangout a bit more than me, I think. Yeah, yeah, we've used Hangouts and we've also just moved to something uh, called appear.in. Appear? Yeah. A-P-P-E-A-R? Yeah. Okay. Um, which is a similar style tool. Um, yeah. So I mean... Why did you move from Google Hangout to Appear? Are you just experimenting um, or...? It was one of the developers came across it mm -hmm. and suggested it. We were having a, a bit of a uh, an issue with Hangouts. Um, I'm not sure if it's a New Zealand internet connection thing, um, but the quality just wasn't quite there. And especially when we got, so in our situation, we had um, most of the team in the office here, a product mm. owner um, phoning in and then occasionally team members calling in when they worked from home or something like that. And when yep. we got that situation where there were three or four people in the call, the quality really dropped off. Right. Um, oh, we're not sure why. Yeah. Um, so we just were, were having a play with, with a few other tools and Appear has been really great. I think the other thing with Google Hangout is it's really disconcerting when someone does something like put a dog's face over their face. Yes. Um, I was having a serious conversation with our MD some time ago <laughs> and uh, next minute there he was with like whiskers and a, a dog's nose and like some devil's horns I think um, which made right. it quite hard to continue that serious conversation. Yes. Uh, equally one of our product owners um, suddenly appeared in a pirate hat recently. Yes. Yeah. Which was also. Yeah it does make backlog grooming challenging. More fun? More or, or, uh, challenging. Okay. I don't know. More fun. Um, <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I think Google Hangouts, the, the one thing that we did like about Google Hangouts and why we started with it was the ability to um, keep the same Hangout for stand-ups and stuff like that. So right. you share yeah. the link and you can come back to the oh, same okay. Hangout so you yeah, don't have to set up well. a new one and invite people every time. Yeah. Um, we, um, the reason we, 
appear sort of replace that is it's it still has that feature right. so we have a room that we've got a reserved URL and mm. people can use it anytime so is that um, free or paid for it's free at the moment okay so are they a startup kind of business yeah they, they're in a startup and I think what's going to happen is when you get to more people in the conversation mm. yeah. um, then they'll, charge. they'll charge yeah um, so we're finding that really great at the moment having that space it's essentially another room for the team. Mm -hmm. So if they ever need to talk to the product owner who's remote, they popping. just, it, like it's not even a question of, shall mm. we do a hangout, shall we do it on Skype, FaceTime or whatever. Right. It's just, it's, time. it's just, just there, go, go into a pair and, and have yeah. a chat. I quite like um, Zoom, which is um, free for up to an hour. Right. Um, and normally the conversations I'm having are pre-sales conversations, so they're not usually more than an hour. Um, I like it because it um, highlights the person who's speaking, um, sort of bring the person who's speaking into the big window, um, or if there's two people sort of speaking, you know, in conversation, it just highlights them as they're speaking. Yeah. Um, and you can organise recurring appointments if you know. So, for example, if you're using it for stand up, um, I haven't used it for a while actually, because um, because the thing about Skype is it appears that everybody has a Skype ID. Yeah. You know, um, I mean, Skype has been around for many years. I was I was an early user of Skype, and um, back when everyone was still using MSN Messenger, yes. uh, I started using Skype because it was just a bit more slick. Yeah. Um, and it was for quite some time the only tool I would oh, use. Yeah. Um, but I think there's been so many other products come out now that there are alternatives. And I think what a lot of people do, certainly in New Zealand, is when Skype's not working very well, they'll switch to Zoom. If Zoom's not working very well, they'll switch to Google Hangout and we'll sort of go around the systems until we strike one that's working yes. to our satisfaction that day. Yeah. Um, I mean, that doesn't happen every time, but it yeah. can be a challenge. Yeah. Um, I actually read a really interesting blog post from the, the guys at Pivotal Labs. Um, mm. So they have a lot of people working remotely. Um, and they did this blog post that actually their biggest problem with video conferencing tools is not video anymore it's audio right um and that's okay. something I, I don't know if, if you found but mm. we found a lot is it's very rare that you can't see the person there might be a bit of lag in the video mm. um but our biggest problem is getting everyone heard um is that to do with the volume of voices or the actual audio? <laughs> no, no, it is the actual audio. I mean, right. we do have some very quiet people yeah. in the team. <laughs> yeah. Um, but but it is the quality of the audio. They can't hear me sometimes. Okay. So that's. Yeah, um, I haven't really struck that problem. I mean, you know, I use Skype at home to talk to friends in the UK. And, yeah. Um, when there is a problem, it's usually a freeze. Always when they've got a weird expression on their face. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or when I've got a weird expression on my face. So we'll pop the link up to the, the Pivotal thing. They, they have a quite novel solution. They've figured out that iPads with the speaker cases, I'm not sure if you've seen no, those no, before, they sort of this. for uh, guys who want to watch videos or, right. or girls who would like to watch people. videos. Just people. Just people yeah. who want to watch videos on their iPad. Oh, okay. Um, so they sort of quite good quality speakers and then right. a mic that plugs into that. Oh, okay, and that's um, their optimum. That's, that's what all their all their teams use and okay. if they're working hmm. remotely with someone they just pick up the iPad and have it next to their computer hmm. um, to talk to people. Well, maybe we should look um, at something like that for those individual conversations. Yeah, yeah I think um, it could, could be very useful. Yeah, and before we move on um, to comms tools, um, just a word on what we use for our remote worker at the office or our remote workers because people are in and out all the time. Uh, we use Sococo uh, which is a virtual team space and that allows us to chat message um, and video conference and has different rooms you can you can work in if it's not pertinent to the whole team and they don't want to be bothered by it. Um, and I, I find that works reasonably well um, yeah. most of the time. Um, sometimes it's a bit restarty, but you, know, yeah. you kind of get used to that stuff, don't you? Yeah, and I think, um, well, I suppose this is a good segue into comms tools, but mm. when you are working in that remote environment, just having a place where everyone is well you can see and, them yeah and you know that everyone's around is, is really mm. great so there's a li little um, avatars that show up on the team workspace visual that you can see yeah I know um, we when we were sort of choosing tools um, one of our teams experimented with a, a tool called squiggle mm. 
um, and that's the same idea yeah um, except it uses your camera and takes a a photo of you I think every minute or so oh like a with a cam or something yeah yeah and yeah. so you can see if a person's at their desk but you're not sort of watching yeah. them type in yeah, real time their nose or whatever. It's yeah yeah desk. so you just have to make sure that you time you when you're gonna pick your nose so right. it doesn't get captured for you got a bit of flash and, and yeah well, so you wouldn't we, we did have a an amusing experience one of the guys had been working on a really tricky problem for about three days um, and it took a photo of him going like this just as he he'd, he'd won he'd won he'd fixed the problem oh, so that was nice. that was quite cool yeah that's very really good um, so on on com tools comms tools oh we were just talking about this cocoa that I had written down here but but anyway there's a number of things that that we use and sometimes it's specific to, to projects um, sometimes it's a whole team thing uh, one thing that we make good solid use of is, is base camp um, yeah. You know, I think once you've started using Basecamp on a project, you just can't really go back to email because it's just so hard, hard to find email conversations. Yeah, you know, yeah, um, absolutely. Well, it's not hard to find them, but it's really easy to miss stuff. Yeah, yeah, you know. it's really easy to miss stuff. And it's also great sort of anyone can find it. Mm. You know, it might, yeah. not, it might start off as a conversation between two me team members, mm. but then if you need to bring someone else in, you don't have to forward them this horrible mess of an yeah. email string you just say oh here's the link in base camp yeah plus um, plus for people who get a bit delete happy on their email um you know it's me. yeah same it's always randomly done though it's never consistent but you know <laughs> base camp it stays there yeah. there's no random deletion of conversations yeah so just just for people who realize we just yeah. going on about base camp and haven't knows really what base camp is don't they and, yeah. well no probably possibly not it's what it is is um, it's designed as a really lightweight project management tool mm -hmm. um, so you can basically have conversations within Basecamp like R an written, email written, written conversations, written conversations um, like an email thread and it's all stored um, and searchable in there there's also um, you can also track projects as well there's mm -hmm. calendars and milestone mm, that's um, right and tasks and tasks and, mm. and those sort of things so it is it does give you all the tools to manage a project but it is designed to be really lightweight. Um, yeah. So it's, it works much the same way a discussion form would work in terms of the written communication. So you start threads and then you can add whole project team, specific members, um, you can hide it from your client for some reason, we never use that. Um, you can attach files, screenshots, whatever, documents. Um, so it just keeps it all in one place, really handy to have that thread of conversation. Yeah, um, yeah. What is bad is when people um, <coughs> continually reply to the same thread on different topics, then you end up with just one thread for the whole project. Yeah. <laughs> and, and there's some really nice little features as well in Basecamp, like um, it does send you email alerts when people That's respond right, yeah. to your communications. And you can respond from your email, which I think is really important for clients because, you know, everybody has so many logins these days. And while we go into Basecamp every single day, um, they may only have sort of 10% of their day focused on that particular project. Yeah. So if they can reply from within their email, it doesn't disturb the flow of their normal work. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and it's, yeah. I think everyone that, there's really been no one that's objected to using it. I did have one client. Oh, one. Yeah. He it's, said he had too many systems. Okay. So, but it did make things difficult in yeah. terms of finding previous communication with that particular client. And I mean, I think you can't understate the, the file management as well. Mm. It's great being able to, you know, if someone sends you a document, just being able to stick it up there and yeah. that's name where it, it is. appropriately. Yeah. Um, and it's name you can, the thread. Yeah, name the thread, mm. and you can mm. you can preview them, and, and it's just a central place. You know, mm. where's the file, basically. Yeah. Um, for some reason, we're running on two versions of Basecamp, though an old Basecamp and a new Basecamp. Yes. It, it's have they not? given us the ability to migrate projects. No, no, there's definitely the ability to migrate projects. Oh, we just haven't done it. There is um, a very convoluted explanation that I'm not going to bore people with. <laughs> okay, okay. Because, um, yeah, that's... That would be wonderful if we could just be on one. Yeah, no, wouldn't it? But uh, anyway, that's an internal <laughs> thing probably. Um, so um, another one that you guys use in terms of chat 
functionality is um, Slack, which is yeah. started using this year, I believe. Yeah, last so year, late last year. Um, one of our clients actually started using Slack mm. for their teams and invited us to join in. So we'd be um, party to what was going on. So I think previously we'd used Campfire, which is part of Basecamp, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. I always found that Campfire was quite hard to add new users to projects. Yeah, yeah. it was so quite it, um, on Slack. Yes, Basecamp has since, I think. Did they fix that? No, discontinued. Discontinued campfire. it, right. Um, okay. Sort of refocused. They didn't really give it much attention, I don't think. Ah, didn't give it much love. Um, yeah. yeah, so we've so we've been using Slack and it's been it's been really, really good. It's, what do you like about it? Um it's it's very easy to set up um, and get started really quickly. Right. And so we they have the idea of channels which mm. is, I suppose, kind of similar to rooms in Sokoko, mm -hmm. um, where, so there's a, a channel for the dev stuff, there's a random channel to pay, post pictures of cats. And right, so it's a mini chair of life, uh, yeah. Yep, um, and then there's something to get in touch with everyone. Um, like a broadcast. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then, and so it's, it's really easy to get, um, get going with. Um, there's some really simple, um, ways of tagging people and creating new actions. Mm -hmm. They're also um, really clever in that they integrate with a lot of tools. Right. So you can start a hangout from Slack. Okay. So which yeah. is really nice if yeah. you're having a chat with someone and you then say, oh, actually we need to talk about this properly. You just type in the short code and mm. you have a hangout straight away, um, which is which is nice. Um, and I think. Um, they're adding new stuff all the time, okay. which is which keeps it sort of interesting. Fresh, yeah. Um, keeps you coming back. Keeps us coming back, yeah. and yeah, it just it just works seamlessly, um, and it's really great. You can set the the notification level that you get mm -hmm. is highly customizable, so you don't have to find out about every word that everyone says, which I think is sometimes a problem with chat tools, is mm -hmm. you just get, you know, someone says hi to someone else, and you you get notified about it. Right. Um, I think also our client has really bought into it, so it's a really kind of vibrant place. That's good. Um, yeah, I noticed they're very chatty on it. I was invited to join it, but um, I just have time what, with one thing and another to participate in conversations. It's not my project, so, yeah. you know, um, sort of got various <laughs> chat channels going on and various things, um, so yeah. I to subscribe to that. But I noticed they were quite, you know, sort of check in in the morning, hey, I'm here, I'm doing this, or... I'm not in the office, I'm somewhere else, yeah. but I'll be there at certain time. Or, um, yeah. yeah, so I mean, much much like the way that we use Coco. Or yeah. Not so much lately, but had used Coco in the past. Yeah, and I think, I think that's a really important point to make is these tools don't need engagement. Mm. Um, whichever ones you're going to use, I mean, I know. They do need engagement. They do need yeah. engagement. Yeah. You know, we, we tried Yammer. Oh yeah, I think was yeah. was pre Sokoko. Some while ago, yeah, and I um, wasn't a fan of it. But. And it just—I I don't know why. I don't think it was anything to do with the tool, but we just didn't, didn't click with to it. it. Yeah. Um, and I yeah, know lots of people who use it though, actually. Yeah, and mm. I, I know someone who absolutely swears by it. Mm. Um, thinks it's the best thing ever. But if if your teams are not engaged with these tools, they they it's, gonna work, it's yeah. not going to work. So I think mm. really don't. There's no point in trying to force something on, on your teams. Make sure it, it's almost better to, for it to come from the team to identify a need for chat or mm. video conferencing or something yeah, that's like right. that. That's um, right. Um, okay, we'll wrap it up. But just before we go, uh, a small announcement. I don't know if we've announced that Gavin, uh, unfortunately, has left us for another company at the end of last year. Just um, disappeared. Quite suddenly disappeared. Um, so sadly we had to wave goodbye to him, but we are welcoming two new Agile coaches in a couple of weeks' time. So hopefully um, the next board or the one after that, there'll be someone new on the catch. Yeah, that would be exciting. Yeah, so uh, look forward to, to having someone new join us and uh, we'll see you in a couple of weeks.